Chase Thomas podcast. The Chase Thomas podcast. <laughs> um, my nephew needs me to record. See, I hate. I already hate it. I hate it. All right, we're back here on the Chase Thomas podcast, where I'm now joined by a first timer on the program. Someone I've read for many years. She's at Go Vols 247. You've seen her all across uh, Knoxville local television this week, whether it's WBLT, WBAR. Who knows where you might see a mur- wow, Maria Cornelius on uh, this just very exciting time here uh, at Tennessee, just across the board uh, at Everything School HQ. But the Lady Vols conduct their first out of the Pat Summit tree hire um, this week. And it was one where I imagine, Maria, you had a whirlwind of a weekend what was what was it the lead up uh for this last week for you like it was, thursday is when we first started hearing the name mm-hmm. the, the name was 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 being mentioned then so at that point you used to start looking for anything you could find mm-hmm. about coach kim caldwell and you start crafting a story so when it happens you're ready to go and then you basically have every notification turned on <laughs> on your phone you're calling mm-hmm. people trying to see If anybody's heard, you also start following people in West Virginia media because it's been my experience with coaching searches. If it breaks, it tends to break out of their home market. Yeah. So you start doing that. And then um, uh, Saturday, I thought I didn't think they would announce it on Saturday at all. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's that's right in the middle of the men's final four. Right. semifinals and and Saturday's just not a breaking news kind of day. Mm-hmm. Sunday afternoon it started getting getting out that this this is coming right now so every, everybody get ready. We we could sort of see that developing on on Twitter. Part of that is the women's championship game was yep. Sunday. You can't have that many reporters and writers in one place <laughs> and something like this not break. I mean I'm sure it was being talked about a lot in in Cleveland so that's when you start to realize, all right, this is happening. Were you surprised it ended up being, cause there was a lot of smoke early on that Kim Caldwell might end up being uh, the target for Danny white and who might end up being um, the next Tennessee balls or lady balls uh, head coach. Was it kind of a surprise for you that it didn't end up being a smoke screen and it wasn't a more exhaustive expansive search because this is the first time uh, they've gone outside the Pat summit tree this cycle. So I had I saw where some people mentioned that a smoke screen and, and mm-hmm. you have to realize covering Lady Vols, we don't do coaching searches. I mean, this is only the <laughs> yeah. second one in the history of the program. So I had no real and I often said I felt sorry for all the beat writers on the men's side because of all mm-hmm. the coaching searches and AD searches they have been through. We were just coasting along on the Lady <laughs> Ball side. And then you have your first one in 2019, and then mm-hmm. five years later, you, you have another one. If you had told me Monday when you know Kelly was first let go that the next coach at Tennessee would come for Marshall, I probably would have been stunned. Yeah. By the time it got into the end of the week and her name was coming up, then, then it was like, all right, this may be happening. And I mean, looking at her, this is a big step. Nobody's going to try to sugarcoat that this is not a this is a huge step. Mm-hmm. Looking at her overall record, her philosophy, I can see where she could be. She would be attractive if you're trying to do what Danny White is doing. Is it a gamble? Absolutely. It's a mm-hmm. big gamble for him, for her. Uh, personally, am I pulling for her? Yes, because I don't want to go through another coaching search. This is yeah. plenty. I, I'm done with coaching <laughs> searches. Let's just, mm-hmm. I don't know how reporters deal with coaching searches. You don't sleep. Yeah. You're tracking everything. It's I, I do not want any more coaching searches. So let's go. What um when you look at I mean, we talk about the she's young and she's it, it, like Kelly Harper came in, obviously, as uh, a champion with Pat Summit years ago. And um, she came in with a lot of experience, like a lot of people may have had questions about what her ceiling was. At Tennessee, I think that was one of the questions of like, how much should, could she really win um, at Tennessee versus where she's been previously? But she like with with Kim, though, I think what's most fascinating is that it feels like to me. Kelly had more of a high floor where you kind of knew that it would be solid at worst case scenario with Kelly at UT with the resources that we have um, that what the position that she was walking into that Tennessee Lady Balls basketball would be solid. I mean, you went back to back sweet 16s like there was like we kind of saw that play out that way. 
with Kim, it seems like Danny White's more of a this is a boomer bust type deal. Do you do you get do you have that same sentiment where you think we'll know within a couple of years if Kim is a home run long term hire or if this was just too much too soon for a coach who just became a pat like a, um, a, a division one head coach last year? Like, do you think this will be one of those kind of deals? I, 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 it's definitely risky. I, mm. I like what I heard, what I've heard so far. I do think people need to be patient. I mean, mm. th- the roster needed reinforcements before Kelly left. Yeah, and the portal is is popping, and Tennessee hasn't been. You know, basically during a coaching search, everything is on pause. It's mm. on hold. So she needs to build a roster that can play at this level. Does anyone expect that to happen in the next two months? I hope not. I mean, yeah. She the level she wants to play. Mm. I mean, if, if she can keep the returning the returning players on board and pluck some some veterans out of the portal, Tennessee can be competitive. Yeah, I mean, there there is enough talent on that roster coming back. You know, Jill Spear, Sarah Puckett, Julian Julian Hollingshed. She's she's poised for a breakout season. You know, Talaja Cooper can can Tennessee keep her? Kanaya Boyd, the freshman that enrolled in January. A very good defensive player. So I'll be very curious to see how Tennessee can bolster this roster with what they need and then compete, compete in the SEC. I, I do think there has to be time. There has to be grace period given to get your arms around this. I mean, even if, yes, if you had brought in a veteran power five coach, even mm-hmm. that coach would still need, need time to get their arms around it. Tennessee is a, it's it's a it's a lot. Tennessee fans are a lot. It's it is a it is a big job, and I I'll be very. She I like the the West Virginia attitude, the tone and mm-hmm. tenor, the sense of humor. I like it. I, it's there, it's a different sense of humor. The story she told about her grandmother. I mean, you know, cracked me up about telling her ninety six year old grandmother she was going to Knoxville, and then mm-hmm. her grandmother said, I, "I have a lot of friends in Knoxville," and and then said, "But I, I think they're all dead." <laughs> So I know I'm like, that is so West Virginia. If you've ever, mm. like Alexis Hornbuckles from West Virginia has one of the most deadpan sense of humors you'll ever is a, it's a different Mary Ostrowski, a famous mm. lady ball from West Virginia. It is a different breed of, of person. And it's, it, it's tough. That's a tough state to, to grow up in. It is so mm. cold. Yeah. And I, I, I traveled there for her homecoming game. I'm like, boy, this is beautiful. And then I got out of the car. And I thought I was going to die. Yeah, it's like, it's not for me. Um, that's funny. Do you think, so it sounds like you're, she might have like the kind of, like it's still really early. We've just seen early impressions in the press conference and little things. But it does seem like she has the kind of demeanor that will make it easy. And you would know better than anybody here of like walking in Pat's shadow. She seems to have the kind of personality that will be able to, handle that and kind of run with that. Did, did you get that same sense? And she didn't play for Pat. Yeah. And that, that's a big difference. Kelly and and Holly played for Pat. Mm-hmm. Pat is echoes all over that arena. Yeah. Her pictures. I mean, the memories they're in her office. I mean, they sit in Pat's old office. Yeah. It's, it, they hear her voice. I mean, her voice pipes in on video or audio during the We Back Pat game. Mm-hmm. It, it is I mean, that gutted both of them to lose yeah. Pat. I mean, particularly Holly, who was here and watched Pat deteriorate and then die. I mean, Holly was right there for all of it. Mm-hmm. And then Kelly comes in and, and and has been gone. She's been gone for 20 years. So, But even then, that passage of time, it, it, it hit. You could see that there's times it just hit Kelly, like hearing mm-hmm. Pat. She even talked about it after a wee back Pat game, hearing Pat's voice. And say it, telling her players, wait a minute, that that's my coach talking. Just give me a second. So, yeah. it, it, it just is. Does Kim Caldwell have a have a big task at hand? Yes. I mean, right now, I can't imagine what her to do list looks like. It, yeah. I mean, there she has got to do everything right now. She has got to get in the portal. She's got to reach out to 2025. She's got to keep her team. I mean, step mm-hmm. number one is keep the team you have. 
Right. So they need FaceTime with her and, t- and and ability to talk to her and meet with her. Then you you've got to try to make sure your 2025 recruits are you know that you're still going after them because they're waiting to see what the change looks like. So and uh next week April 19th the first uh, high school showcase in person events from mm-hmm. Texas to uh east coast to west coast. So she's got to get on the road and <laughs> find a staff to take with her. So yeah. It, it's a lot. Even Kelly said when she got here, she felt like she was drinking out of a fire hose and she had been through it before. Mm-hmm. And so she, she's got a lot on her plate. When you think about Kelly and Holly, did it go awry the same way? Did they ha- uh, deal with the same struggles as the Lady Vols head coach? Like what were some of the differences that you noticed covering both? Um, and what were some of the similarities uh, with their tenure as head coach? They, with with the Hollies group, they did really well for several years. And then mm-hmm. there was a couple seasons where team chemistry just never clicked. And mm-hmm. and that, I mean, they recruited well. But it was, yeah. and even Holly said afterwards, she goes, I wish I had recruited less, a little less talent and a couple more glue players. Hmm. Because the chemistry just does never for those last two seasons never got on track, and you could mm-hmm. I mean you could see it in that last season with the the brutal game where they lost to Vanderbilt at home, mm-hmm. and during the breaks in play you would see Vandy huddled or talking or you know, pl- a couple of players talking, and, and Tennessee players just looked adrift. Yeah, I mean just un and almost unengaged, but in a sad kind of way. Yeah. So with with Kelly. The pandemic did hurt. You, you you all of a sudden can't recruit in person. It's a lot harder for a new head coach in the SEC. And then high school recruiting, they they did so well in the portal. High school recruiting, you know, it's it 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 faltered at the beginning and then it got better, but then NIL entered. And I mean, Tennessee had a solid class. At least two kids I thought would sign in 2023, and NIL took them away. Hmm. And I mean, I mean, top, top players. Yeah. Top, I mean, top 10, top 25 players. So the NIL has got to be fixed. Mm. There comes a cap. <laughs> um, there's patches. NIL absolutely has got to be fixed uh, for women's basketball. That That is, I mean, that's, that's not really Kim's job, but she has to be up, you know, visible and supportive of it and that type, type of thing that comes from, you know, your, collectives and your fans and sponsors and donors something i i wondered about i mean one of the ones that i think i wonder if it's just going to sit with kelly for a long time is just if the bank three doesn't go in against south carolina and tennessee wins that game do you think we're here do you think kelly harper no, doesn't I, no yeah. i think i think um now now my cat's attacking me um <laughs> i think i think you're exactly right if they beat south carolina we're not here and that yeah. that that's a brutal brutal thing for Kelly to have to process. If they if NC when Tennessee had the chance to cut that NC State lead from four to two, mm-hmm. and they missed the uh you know they granted a timeout after the ball was clearly in play. The replay showed the ball had left the player's hand inbounding, and then the the official's arm goes up. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, Kelly was apoplectic. I don't blame her. I mean, Jewel yeah. was right there. That now it's a two point game. And then suddenly NC State gets the ball back, hits a yeah. bucket, and now instead of being down two, you're down at least two scores. So it's yeah, there's the she, Kelly can what if yeah some that, those two March games until you know she she could you know lose her mind. I, I I wish her well. I don't know what she wants to do next, but I will be keeping up with her. She, I mean, she's a lady ball for life. So is Holly. Yeah. And what do you I, think she does? What would you guess based on what you know about Kelly? What do you think she does next? She loves coaching. I mean, it's mm-hmm. her passion. It's what she does. I mean, I would think she would want to stay in it, but mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this isn't this isn't like losing your job at NC State. Right. This is your alma mater. She loves yeah. Tennessee. She loves Tennessee football. She loves Tennessee sports. This is this cuts you in half. Yeah. Like it did Holly, and Holly had the disadvantage too. This is her hometown. Yeah, she most coaches you leave, you go back to somewhere else. Holly lives here. Yeah, so I think that, the positive though is like one of the things that I think stuck out to me of just reading the different pieces and reading how people talked about Kelly is just that everyone just felt so bad. 
like the whole situation was just everyone like she can stay in Knoxville or Holly can stay. And I think people were really rooting hard for it all to work out. So it's not going to be one of those situations where you just kind of have to hide because I think she would still be embraced wherever she goes. People are going to be thankful for the time, thankful for the years, thankful for the championships as a player. Like, I think that would be something that would provide reassurance. I think if for Holly and Kelly is that like, even though it did not work out at your alma mater, I think most people still have a positive sentiment towards them and can will continue to do so long after they're the head coach of the balls. I agree. But I I think Holly, I think it took her two years to come to a game. Yeah. I mean, it's it that, I mean, this is their life. This is who they are. This is their identity as a, as a lady ball. And it's, it's, it's brutal. And when it first, you know, the news broke about Kelly Harper, I was like, maybe it's, time to get out of that tree it's brutal yeah. to do that to players the former players it's brutal to do that to a fan base mm-hmm. and in this case there was no heir apparent mm-hmm. i mean there wasn't anyone who had separated themselves that much in in that tree I, I think most people expected it to be outside the tree in a power five um so i think so you never thought Kara lawson was that. realistic uh, no I, because the one I, I was, I mean, she, she likes what she has at Duke and then mm. she did reach a sweet 16, but Duke finished, I think seventh in the ACC last yeah. year. I think we're out in the second round last year. I didn't see that is what fitting this vision of what Danny White was saying, you know, mm. you, I think what's well, got to be a better resume. Yeah. And then what they ultimately did, like you said, he's banking on a future that this mm. is an up and coming coach who was, pro- who, appears to be on a very sharp tra- trajectory up and mm-hmm. did he want to hire her before some other power five school did well i mean time will tell i mean this is one thing where it time will tell relatively quickly yes whether this was a brilliant move or or one that 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 is going to be that that he'll regret i mean but i i liked what i heard out of her and it kind of remi- does it remind you at all of the bruce pearl hire where he comes out of nowhere mm-hmm. and then he just kind of embraces Tennessee and just becomes kind of, I mean, obviously with Bruce and Pat and what that was like uh, for Tennessee during that window. I mean, does it have some of that feeling to you? Yeah. I mean, Bruce had a different personality. I mean, Bruce, yeah. I mean, and now he, you know, he, he has had, has had so much success at Auburn. Mm-hmm. Um, She, she clearly knows how to coach. I mean, you yeah. don't, you don't you I know it was a division two national title, but that's hard to win a national title at any level. I mean that's won a conference title every year she's been a head coach, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh and then went to Marshall mm-hmm. first year, didn't have, you know, basically had the same roster, but I think added a couple a couple transfers. <laughs> and they win the conference and and win the tournament and get an NCAA bid. So yeah. she she clearly is has the ability to do this it's just what is Mm. the timeline what is the patience level and how quickly can can tennessee elevate itself in the sec now it's not like tennessee was awful in the sec i mean tennessee finished either third or fourth they finished in the you know tied for fourth and then either third tied for third the other years so it wasn't like you know they were they were at the bottom half of the sec but the SEC is just beastly. You've got yeah. South Carolina, LSU, and now Oklahoma and Texas on the way. It's mm-hmm. it's a super conference of, of women's basketball right now. Who do you think, when you think about her style, what Kim's going to bring? Um, obviously, she shoots a lot of threes, uh, a lot of steals. It's going to be high pressure, high efficiency offense. Who do you think on this current team will benefit the most if they do end up committing to play for Kim? Uh, in this new era, ladies' ball basketball, who do you, who do you go to? Where does your mind go of like who will really pop under this style? Jewel Spear is would be ideal for it. Hmm. I mean, her ability to shoot threes. Avery Strickland, we didn't get to see much of her because she had the double concussions. I mean, literally, she got out of protocol and got hit in the face. Mm-hmm. I think at the Middle Tennessee game. Yeah, and when you've got back to back concussions, now you're really set back on the protocol. So she got. I mean, you can't do anything. She yeah. probably didn't practice or do anything for you know, three weeks mm-hmm. b- until you've passed that protocol, and then you've got to ease back. Yeah, she's b- a very athletic player, multi-sport athlete, and and at Farragut High School here, mm-hmm. and 
she can shoot. I, I would I I I would love to see what what her development can be over the summer and how she can perform healthy uh, yeah. next year. I like it. Um, well, ultimately, we'll end it on here, uh, Maria. What does your gut tell you? Do you think Kim works out or do you think this will be just a, a big swing and a miss? What's your gut tell you on which way this goes? I think I think she'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And part of that is I'm sending that into the universe because I don't mm-hmm. want any more coaching searches. I, I, you're I, adamant. You are absolutely adamant. done with it's this. Stressful. You're one and done. You're like, this is too much. I'm out. Yes. I mean, there were zero coaching searches in the history of the program. And now there's mm-hmm. been two in the last 10 years. So I, I, I mean, she's intriguing. The upside is very high. You can yeah. hear it when she talks. She knows how she wants to play. She mm-hmm. knows what she wants to do. There was a, an exchange on Twitter that I saw. Yeah. She, she was in there where the twins that Alicia Manning, former Lady of All Alicia Manning, now is with um, Ohio Extreme. It's an mm-hmm. AAU program. She's right, assistant right. director. Mm-hmm. And those two twins, uh, they re, one of them retweeted the part that I did on WATE about talking mm-hmm. about them. And she came in and was talking to the to, – to, well, I think it uh, – I can't remember because I don't want to say the wrong one, but it was one of one of the twins that played for Pierce mm-hmm. is their last name. And she put up double exclamation points and said, you must not have told them about the eights. I mean, <laughs> clearly some kind of practice drill. Mm-hmm. And I've heard players talk about how, you know, players hate her and then they love her. Yeah. So if she brings, you know, she could bring some of that, that toughness of, of, you know, Pat, because Pat didn't mind her. I mean, her players were, they didn't like her either when they played <laughs> for her, but then they came They came to love her. And mm. she she has a sense of purpose. She seems to understand where she what she wants to do. I, I, I think she just right now needs to get her arms around it, get a staff in place, and uh, consider some experience on the staff that has who has recruited at this level. Mm. It's a whole – it's a whole different – it's shark-infested waters out there in, in women's <laughs> basketball recruiting, and she has never probably – I don't think Kelly was ready for how negative it got here. Hmm. I think she was stunned by – she would pursue a kid, and that kid was just absolutely bombarded with negative messaging about Tennessee from other schools that want her. Other coaches do not want Tennessee back. It is in their yeah. best interest that Tennessee does not get back to the top because this is a juggernaut if it does. It is – literally the mothership of the sport and a fan base just waiting to erupt. And I promise you there are, I mean, there's coaches throughout systems that don't want Tennessee back, particularly those that get particular favors Mm. for steering kids certain ways or who are trying to negotiate NIL. They they're, they're not real thrilled if if Tennessee starts coming back. So she's going to find out how quickly she's got to combat negative recruiting. And I mean, it, it gets ugly, ugly out there with Tennessee. Fascinating. Uh, I love it. Well, Maria, this has been great. What can uh, the good folks check out from you all across uh, Go Vols 247 and everywhere else this week? Yes. I, I think everybody involved in the coaching search, the writers anyway, need a little rest. So, mm-hmm. But I appreciate you you asking me to be on Chase, and I'm happy to come back anytime. Awesome. Well, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a fun uh, fun time for the Lady Vols basketball. It's going to be different. Like, that's the whole thing. It's like we're in a new era. I think there's going to be a lot of energy and there's just going to be a lot of curiosity. I think a lot of folks are going to be walking through uh, with just like, I don't really know what to expect. <laughs> and you've kind of known what to expect for a long time. And it's going to be uncharted waters, but it, it could be really fun. And I think that's just sometimes uncertainty is fun. And even though you don't want to do it again for a while, you don't want to do the uncertainty again. It, and, uh, and get behind her. Give her a chance. I mean, yeah. buy, donate, get season tickets, renew your season tickets. Don't, don't, I mean, don't abandon the program just because maybe things didn't go exactly the way you wanted. Get, I mean, Tennessee fans are, are loyal. They're very yeah. loyal. I will give them that. They are passionate and loyal. So, you know, get behind the program. You know, that's what Pat would want. As I said in that column I wrote, Pat would say it is what it is, but it will be what you make it. I love it. Maria, thank you so much for the time. I greatly appreciate it. And we'll have to do it again soon. All right. Take care.